Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Intermediate. All right. Welcome, intermediate students. Welcome back to the program. And welcome to class number three. That's right. We will start today with a little review of what we saw in class number two. We were practicing in the last class with the verbs to check, to check, comprobar, to check, to ask, pre uh, preguntar, preguntar, to ask, with the strong K, ask, to play, jugar, to work, trabajar, to call, llamar, and to book, to book, reservar. Okay, and what we saw was very important about the pronunciation. We have a hard K in many of these verbs. K, k, b book, check, okay, ask. Now, these are regular verbs. So, as regular verbs... What we have to remember is that there are still some different ways that we pronounce the endings. So we have to check becomes yesterday I checked. Checked. There is no extra syllable. But with all verbs that end in K, all regular verbs that end in K, we have a T sound in the past. Checked. Checked. The same as Asked. No extra syllable. Not asked, but asked. Okay? At home, repeat with me. Today I ask, yesterday I asked. Today I ask, yesterday I asked. Very good. Today I play, yesterday I played. This is a very different sound in the past. We have the D sound, the hard D. Played. No extra syllable, but the hard D. I played. To call. Yesterday I called. Today I call. Yesterday I called. Today I book. Yesterday I booked. My friend plays golf on the weekend. He plays golf on the weekend. Or on the weekends. Every weekend. He plays golf every weekend. Last weekend he played golf. Okay? He works with me. Last year... In voz alta, he worked. Right, I need to hear that T, worked with me. He often books hotels. Last year, he booked hotels. Very good. She asks me why. Yesterday, she asked. She asked me why. Good. He checked his answers carefully. Yesterday, he checked. With that hard T sound, he checked his answers carefully. Very good. He always works on weekdays. This is interesting. We say weekdays. You say días laborales, like work days. But we say weekdays for the days from Monday to Friday, inclusive. We say weekdays. And Saturday and Sunday are the weekend. We say during the week, I work during the week. I relax on the weekend. In American English, we say on the weekend. In British English, they say at the weekend. In Canada, we usually use American English, usually. So I will call it North American English. But there are some cases where we choose the British form. But usually, most things are similar to the United States in terms of Canadian English. So, I work during the week. I work on weekdays. Last year, I worked on weekdays. Okay? My mother calls me on the weekend. Last weekend, she called me. Okay? Similarly, we can change from the simple past to the present. By saying, yesterday he checked the mail, and every day he checks 
the mail. So remember, third person singular, please, please remember the S of the third person singular. Very important. Last year, he worked for a different company. This year, he... S-O-S. He works for this company. Last year, he booked a nice holiday. Every year, he books a nice holiday. Okay? And with usually, usually, usually I... So uh, I could say I... uh, Usually, I eat lunch at 2 o'clock. But yesterday, I ate lunch at 12 o'clock. Usually, I book a flight to Canada in the summer. But last year, I booked a flight to Asia. Okay? Usually, he works during the week. But last week, he didn't work. He didn't work. Usually, he eats a sandwich for lunch. But yesterday, he didn't eat. He didn't So, he didn't, in the negative, didn't, and then infinitive. Very easy. But yesterday, I didn't. Every day, I come to the studio. But yesterday, I didn't. Well, usually, I come to the studio. But yesterday, I didn't. Okay. It's time to move on. Word of the day. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's time for the word of the day. That's right, the word of the day. We have a special word today. Que es el destino. ¿Cómo se dice en inglés el destino? Pues digamos destiny. Destiny. Cuando hablamos del destino como después de un, bueno, en un viaje, our destination When we're traveling, I'm driving to Barcelona. What's my destination? Barcelona. Barcelona is my destination. But my destiny is el destino. We're talking about what what will happen to me later in my life. And some people believe in destiny and some people don't. Some people think that everything happens for a reason. And uh, we meet people. Because we're supposed to meet them. It's our destiny. We, we move to a certain place because it's our destiny. I don't know if I believe in this destiny theory or not, but some people believe that. But that's the word destiny. It's like in Star Wars. I love the Star Wars movies. Episode 4, which was actually the first one created, 1977, when Darth Vader, not not not. Darth Vader, but Darth Vader. Darth Vader says to Luke, Join me. It is your destiny. Actually, more like, Join me now. It is your destiny, he says. In English, the voice is is done by James Earl Jones, who has a very deep voice, a very nice, deep voice. Join me now. It is your destiny. We will rule the galaxy as father and son, he says. It's great. It's a great line. Uh, Join me now. It is your destiny. Your destiny. He wasn't talking about your destination. That wouldn't make any sense. He said, it is your destiny. All right. Okay, now we can move on to class three. Here we are. We We start talking about the verb to break. The verb to break and in the simple past. So this is an irregular verb. Today I break. Yesterday I broke. My brother broke the glass. So today I break. Yesterday I broke. Repeat that with me. Today I break. Yesterday I broke. Every day he breaks. Yesterday he broke. She broke. She broke the vase. She broke the record. Un record. Yes, we break records as well. You can break a bone. I've never broken a bone. This is true. I have never broken a bone. My brother has never broken a bone either. That's true. To break bread. To break bread with someone means to dine with them, to eat with them. To break bread. So, uh, I like to break bread with my family. (laughs) It's very, I don't know, it sounds very religious, though. 
We don't normally say this to, to, to break bread. But in terms of breaking records, uh, well, the winter, uh, sorry, the Summer Olympics recently, uh, well, last time uh, in China, many records were broken. Many, many records. In fact, Michael Phelps, who was really the story, wasn't he? He was the story of the Beijing Olympic Games. He broke many records. He broke a record for um, for the 400 meter individual medley, which is which means it's a mix of styles. He broke that record in Beijing. He broke the record that record on the 10th of August in the Beijing Olympics. Okay, he has broken many records. He broke the record for the 100-meter butterfly, which is a certain type of stroke, a certain swimming style. He also broke the record in July of two, of uh, 2009 in Rome for the 200-meter butterfly stroke. He broke the record. He has broken many records. He broke... Uh, I think seven or eight world records in Beijing. He broke many, many world records in Beijing. And uh, people talk about the records that were broken, the records that he broke. And uh, they talk about reason, the reasons why so many records were broken in Beijing. And there are some different theories. One of the theories is about the suit, the swimsuits, Pepe, the bañador, Pepe, that the swimmers now use being much more um, aerodynamic, much faster moving in the water, and they help the swimmers uh, by reducing resistance. Uh, it helps them swim faster. And also, one thing that's interesting is the, the pool in Beijing, was three meters deep, which is deeper than a conventional Olympic swimming pool. Most, many, well, many pools are two meters deep. And apparently having a deeper pool, you can swim faster because it reduces the resistance, apparently. So they say that these factors help, uh, well, helped, um, the swimmers break so many records. They broke many records. Michael Phelps broke many records. He also broke the record in the in the uh, Beijing Games for the 100 meter freestyle stroke, and he also broke the record for the 200 meter freestyle stroke. He broke many records. To break a record, okay. Vocabulary of the day. Did you hear that? Ooh, yes, that's right. It is time for the vocabulary of the day. The vocabulary of the day. That's right. We're going to start with our, well, our first word today is circulo vicioso. How do you say that in English? Very similar to the Spanish. Vicious circle. Be careful with the pronunciation here. Vicious. No, it's vicious. You know, vicious. V vicious. The secret to a good V, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Pay attention. Are you listening? The secret to pronouncing the V in English. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the secret. Pay attention. The V is secretly the same as an F. It's a vocalized F. F. If you say fishes, then you add the vocal cord. You understand? It's vocal. It's not the identical sound. You have to add your vocal cord. You have to, you have to vibrate the vocal cords. Las cuerdas vocales. Vicious. Empiezo con el F. Mira. Ahora la V. Vicious. Vicious. Vicious cycle. De alguna manera, en casa, en voz alta, somehow, somehow, now, ho no vale, somehow, somehow, I'll do it somehow. Okay, number three, bajar, descender, to go down, very good, to go down, 
bajar. Ok, down no es un verbo. El verbo es to go down. To go down the stairs. I have to go down the stairs to get to the radio studio. I have to go down the stairs to get into the metro. To go down the stairs. Bajar, to go down. Entero. Entero. Entire. I ate the entire cake. La tarta entera. The entire cake. I ate the whole thing. The whole thing. The entire thing. Entire. Entire. Okay. Demandar. Poner un pleito. The verb at home. The verb to sue. Eso es. The verb to sue. 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 All right. Very good. Very good. Ahora, well, now, ahora podemos practicar un poco con los, uh, bueno, las fechas. Dates. It's time to practice with some dates. And we can also practice again with our verb, our irregular verb, break, broke. Uh, again, with Michael Phelps. He broke the 100-meter freestyle record on the 11th of August, 2008. On the 11th of August, 2008. Now, pay attention. Be careful here. Listen. Listen to this. I, I want to make sure you understand this because my students make so many mistakes with dates. Okay? He broke the record on the 11th of August, 2008. Okay? Repeat with me. On the 11th of August, 2008. 11th. This is the ordinal number. The 11th. Okay? He broke the record on August 11th. The same. There are two ways to pronounce the dates. On August 11th or on the 11th of August. Okay? On August 11th or the 11th of August. Now, he broke the record on the 11th of August. He broke the record in August. In. Fíjate la preposición que uso. In August... He broke the record in 2008. He broke the record on the 11th of August. Okay? My friend broke his arm on the 10th of June. He broke his arm in June. He broke his arm on the 10th of June. Okay? Very good. Uh, one more record. Again, Michael Phelps, the 200-meter record. He broke the record el día 15 de agosto 2008 on the 15th of August 2008. Very good. Great job at home, guys. Pay attention. Keep listening through the advanced class. We're going to go to a short break. We'll be right back. Pay attention to the advanced class. It will help you. It will benefit you. Keep listening. And I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>